Hey all what's up? So uh, I recently changed up uh, my color grading workflow for photography and uh, a lot of people have been seeing the difference in what I've been doing and uh, asking questions of what I've been changing up and all that. So finally another video I can do. Uh, so yeah, so let's get into here. Uh, let's pick a photo first. So these are all shot in the GFX 50R, kind of like this one. All right, let me reset this one. <clears throat> so now what I've been doing is I do all my color correction in Capture One. Um, kind of color grading, but not too much. And then in Photoshop, I do most of my color grading. And I'm not even using the Fujifilm film simulations when it comes to shots like this, because I want full control of the look. And so I'm sure there is a way where I could use the film simulations, but for me, this is just easier. So you see, immediately when I import a photo, it automatically goes to the curve to the film extra shadow mode. So you can see what this will look like if we put in classic chrome, which is usually what I'm shooting in uh, when I'm doing the actual photo shoots. And we see what Provio looks like. Yeah, you can see I've kind of pushed the tint all over the place. But yeah, it's in film, extra shadow. Again, this is Capture One 20 now. So there's a bunch of little new things. You could do the auto um, white balance, but I'm just going to warm this up a little bit. So when I'm doing the white balance, I'm usually trying to get the skin tones on point. Uh, I'm not too worried about the other colors too much. So you can see you could grow really warm, but then the skin tone's too warm. I want them to look fairly natural. So the model kind of put on this dark lipstick, which I wasn't too crazy about. Uh, she had darker lipstick on before and I told her to wipe it off. Um, but yeah, so let's just put some of these highlights down. It's very foggy that day. When I do my color correction, uh, <clears throat> I kind of just want to push all the colors to one point. Um, so when you look at film, film was, can, could only capture so much color and it would kind of push all like one color tone into one hue and so digital cameras they pick up every little color there's like too much color in there that's what I really love about the Fujifilm simulations is they kind of do that for you but again I gotta do this way just because I want full control because I'm perfectionist with it so um, yeah so the first thing I do again you can do this in Photoshop but it's way harder it's just way easier in Capture One to do it so I'm gonna do a new layer first um, I'm going to go to my skin tone tool. This is in the color tab and I'm going to click on the blues. Now you see it made a blue selection. Just going to widen that a little bit. I don't want the trees in there too much. Keep those separate. So I'm just going to go and push those hues up and you see already it kind of just balanced out the photo a little bit. And I'm going to push the saturation. No, we'll keep saturation down, but I'm going to push the hues a little bit to a kind of a teal look. And then I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit because I don't want the highlights to be affected too much. I want those to stay natural. Um, now we're going to create another layer. I'm going to do the same thing about on the actual skin tones. So I'm going to click on the skin tones. But you see there's some browns in this uh, saddlebag. There's some browns in our boots and browns in the trees. I just kind of want to push those all together. So I'm going to go into the selection. I'm going to take the reds out because I don't want the reds to be affected. And I'm just going to push the hues. And it kind of put it to a magenta look, so I'm going to put some yellows back into there. And then once again, I'm going to take off the highlights. So again, you see it still kind of picked up the lips a little bit. Go back to our first layer. I want to see what it looks like if I put those greens into this adjustment. Let's go to lens. All right, let's do before and after. So before, again, I was shooting classic chrono. I was pushing the tint really blue and green. So you see just color selections. We take these layers off. So even just correcting it. So this would be like the base correction, right? Exposure correction, white balance correction. But I'm going in and then I'm doing my color correction of what my final uh, look's going to go towards. So now let's just open this up in Photoshop. Um, I just do 8-bit color. If it's going to be like a commercial kind of thing, I, I do 16-bit color. So the first thing I, I go to off the bat is selective color. And I go down to the neutrals. So it's basically all the mids. And I just play, start playing around with the color. So the thing is, you could go in to this tool and you could just start messing around. But you're not going to be happy with it unless you have um, an idea of what look you want to go for. So lately, since I've been doing a whole lot more video this past year, my photos have been kind of going a little more cinematic color grading kind of stuff. And not just like teal and orange, but just more more moody and like kind of a, a deeper... Uh, gamma kind of like a mid-tone like the mids are a little bit darker and 
and uh, a little more desaturated but still kind of punchy so again in neutrals is kind of all your midtones kind of your gamma range if you're doing video i'm just gonna drop the exposure down on it i'm gonna go with the blacks Play around with this so actually i think in the blacks i'm gonna do like a magenta So again, if you just go into this and you're just messing around with zero idea what you're gonna do, uh, you can just sit here all day. I mean, I can still sit here all day. The trick is not to like just blast every range with saturation. It's more, you wanna do a vibe, but keep it natural. So I'll also show you another trick that I do to kind of keep it natural. It's another video trick pretty much. Uh, you see we kind of lost our skin there so let's go up to uh let's try the yellows first add some magentas back in there so that looks see, i'm digging that you see how easy that is again you could probably do this in capture one but the reason i do it in photoshop mainly when you're using a raw editor and you're doing adjustments like this it kind of saves too much detail so if you're dropping the mid-range it's gonna do the mid-range like very exact and I kind of don't like that. I, I like in Photoshop when it's a little more destructive. Uh, you're getting what you put in, basically. So again, when you're using a raw editor, it's like you're using the raw materials. And so the raw materials can interact how they want. But when you're using Photoshop, it's kind of like they're forced to do what you want. So some people might not like that because it seems like you have less control, which you kind of do. But at the same time, you can have way more control over it at the same time. I don't know, it's weird. I don't know if any of that made sense, but yeah, that's basically my mindset on it. Uh, okay, let's go to the blues. So again, we already did this color correction. So now when you go to these selective colorings, it's not going to pull individual colors. It's going to kind of bash them all together. So it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so now let's go through, uh, let's see how this looks. I'm just gonna do the curves adjustments again. So curves adjustment is pretty much what we were just doing, but when you're doing actual curves, you get a little bit more control over it. You get to put any point in when you're doing the selective coloring thing, it's kind of, it's giving you what it wants, you know? I don't know if that makes sense. One of the main ways, so when you're color grading and you're really pushing it, you're, uh, what kind of makes it look overdone is the whites will be overly saturated and the blacks will be oversaturated. I don't mind my whites being a little more heavier, but for the blacks, I like to kind of chill them out. So, um, as you saw, I just went to the vibrating tool. I'm going, I'm going to just drop my saturation. I mean, this photo looks pretty badass, black and white too. Um, here, sorry, I'm going fast. Okay. So the vibrancy thing, uh, say you want a layer to affect just your shadows or just your highlights or just your mid range. If you double click on that layer and you play with this, these, uh, blending tools right here, uh, you could pretty much dial that in. There's a handful of ways you could do this, but this is the quickest, easiest, most accurate way in my opinion. Um, so I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to click option on Mac. I'm going to drag this down. You'll see. It starts taking the effect off the highlights and now it's going to take off the mid range and now I can put it on just the black parts. So you see, just dancing around, see how much you want to be affected. So you see how heavy those blues are. I don't think it looks bad, but again, I just want to kind of have a little bit more control over it. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity on that. Now I'm going to select all those command G to put them in the group. I'm gonna click my background layer. I'm gonna do a frequency separation for retouching. Uh, there's tons of actions available online. Just Google it and they're pretty much all free. So this is just one I made real quick, but it's the same thing that everyone else would do. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up to these lips and put hue saturation. I'm gonna colorize, put it into the reds. All right. So this isn't really supposed to be a retouching video, but I'm just gonna last through this real quick yeah 
that's it. So that's pretty much how I've been color grading all my stuff. Uh, let's save that and we'll go look at a uh, before and after. All right, y'all, now we're back in Capture One. So uh, when you're done in Photoshop, just click Command S and it saves it directly back into the uh, folder. So you can see this is how I shot it. I shot it in Classic Chrome, had it push really blue, uh, and then color correction in Capture One and correcting exposure and all that. And then in Photoshop, we did the color grading and I did light retouching. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna properly retouch this after this video, but yeah. So you can see once again, classic Chrome straight out of camera, exposure correction, color correction, capture one, and then color grading in Photoshop. So again, you could probably get a pretty similar look in capture one. Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you want me to like just make more videos like this on different video or on different photos and just grab a photo from like every shoot and just do one just to show you guys. It's kind of the same thing. Um, again, you can easily do this. It's just you need to have like based in the back of my brain, I have a catalog of images of inspiration. That's like whenever I see or whenever I'm doing a photo shoot, I'm editing. I have all that set in my mind. So you just need to study on the kind of work that you like and the kind of work you want to create and study what it is about those photos that that are attracting you and then apply that to yours. So you, you could watch a thousand videos like this, but it comes down to, I think that's like the most important part is just knowing what your work is and who you are with it. So yeah, guys, let me know if you have any other questions, please.